Hello and welcome back to Steven Plays Earthbound. My name is Steven George, I play video games, and I'm playing Earthbound. Uh, I normally start us off with stats, but it's probably not going to do you much good, because we are Jeff. If you missed last episode, uh, Ness and Paula were kind of kind of put into a bad situation. They got beat up by a bunch of zombies after following a hooker into a hotel, or whatever you want to call her, some kind of something. And uh, we had to call out to Jeff to save our life. So now we are controlling Jeff in Snowwood Boarding House in the country of Winters to the north. So I am Jeff. I'm that uh, blonde-haired kid. I got my roommate, Tony, with me. We got to bust out of here. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I heard a more interesting story than the rumor about Tessie. It's about the cave boys at Stonehenge. Many claim to have actually seen them. I heard a creature called Tessie lives in the southern lake. I don't believe it. I think someone made a motto and placed it in the lake. I wonder if the rumor is true that the center of Stonehenge has an, en has an entrance leading someplace. Someday we should check it out. I'm sleepy. I'll wash my face, brush my teeth, do my business, and go to bed. What's in this room? If you're going outside, stop by and say hi to Maxwell before you leave. He always looks out for the younger students. Maxwell is still working hard in the lab downstairs. Anyway, these days there are many dangerous animals wandering around outside. I'm so sleepy. Tony's birthday party is tomorrow. I hand decorated each cookie to pass out at the party tomorrow. Hand decorated. Jeff, open the present. There's a cookie. Cookie! Free cookies! Alright, I'm not going to bother grabbing all the cookies because I I don't find that they're all that, that useful. Let's check this room. And say hi to Maxwell, who is a little frightening looking in my opinion. Oh, Jeff and Tony, you startled me. Are you looking for a late night snack? I'm having some trouble with my project. If only Jeff's father, Dr. Andonuts, were here. He'd be able to provide a great deal of help. I heard he's an outstanding person. He was the first leader of our Ultra Science Club. I heard he's greater than Einstein or Heisenberg. Rumor has it he's also very strange. If you're heading to the locker room, take this key along. It's a little bent, though. Got the key to the locker. If you leave, call me and I'll record your adventure. It's like saving the game. <laughs> Breaking the fourth wall, Earthbound. Breaking the fourth wall. So let's head over into this room and try out that new key we got. So we'll go up to any locker we choose. Go down to the key to the locker and use it. The key is bent and doesn't fit into the keyhole. Ah, Maxwell. So let's go talk to him about that. Haha, <laughs> the key didn't work, did it? I thought that might be the case. So I just invented the machine that opens doors, especially when you have a slightly bad key. Sorry for the inconvenience. Jeff got the bad key machine. If you are Dr. Andonet's son, you should be able to repair small tools and make them useful. Just try to keep a positive attitude. You got it. So let's head back in here. And try the bad key machine, which will open any door. Jeff opened the locker. Unfortunately, there's nothing in this locker. So we gotta open up these lockers and get whatever is in them. And this is gonna help us on our adventure because we will have the necessities to actually make it to um, Ness and Paula. We got a home sat and a pop gun. And I don't believe there's any, anything in the middle one either, but whatever. Broken air gun. Oh, is it this one that there's nothing in? Yeah, okay. I knew there was only three things. All right. So we have a pop gun, which raises our our offense by 16, which is a huge jump. 18 might not be a big offense, but when you think of it in terms of our offense has increased ninefold, okay, yeah, it's kind of a big deal. Uh, and we also have a um, home set. And we got a broken air gun. And once our IQ is high enough, we'll be able to repair it and make an even better weapon. Awesome. So that's, uh, that's that. I mean, we could grab some more cookies, I guess, but I think three cookies is fine. Let's head out. Okay, now use me as a step and climb over the gate. Well, I'll say goodbye for now. I don't know where you're going or why, but remember, we are best friends forever. 
Okay. And, uh, now we're off. Drugstore, best friend. Well, I do love drugstores, no matter who I am. This is weird. There's a monkey in the store. Nah, whatever. There's a monkey at the entrance. Take the monkey. He's really noisy. If you buy a pack of bubblegum, you can have the monkey for free. Otherwise, he will cost you a buck. So do you want him? Uh, well, I guess so. He is a monkey. Thanks. The monkey's yours. Jeff got the pack of bubblegum. What's up, monkey? Kiyu, Iki! Give me some gum. The monkey got a piece of bubblegum from Jeff and blew a bubble. Apparently, apparently the, the bubblegum is made with helium. The bubble monkey joins you. What do you sell? Oh, look, expensive things. Now, these are all items that uh, we can use later. Um, or, I mean, we could use now, like the T-Rex back, nonstick fry pan, coin of silence. These are all great, great items for the team. But unfortunately, we can't afford them. Not even in a million years. We have one dollar. Now, it is possible, and I've done this before, to play in this area as Jeff fighting enemies that will give you things like cookies, selling the cookies for three bucks, and eventually earning enough to buy the T-Rex's bat. Does it take forever? Absolutely. It takes freaking forever. Um, but it is cool if you uh, if you wanted to try something like that. Uh, do I recommend it? Not really, because it kind of screws up um, your level. I mean, Jeff is like at a super high level, and, and Ness is swinging for insane damage. But anyway, let's continue. Okay, so we're wandering through winters. Nothing can go wrong. What's up, goat? How are you? Oh, you're an enemy. Everything's an enemy. Guy guess has put evil influences on the, uh, on all of the animals and creatures and everything. Now, the, uh, the bubble monkey can be a little helpful, as you saw that he, uh, he just did four damage there. So he's not completely useless. I'm doing pretty bad for this gruff goat. Um, there we go. Finally. I'm sure Jeff can level up after that, right? And we left a present. A salt packet. Wow. <laughs> Jeff's level is now 2. Maximum HP went up by 1. Jeff's level is now 3. Offense went up by 2. Defense went up by 1. Speed went up by 1. IQ went up by 1. Maximum HP went up by 1. And remember, he's never ever going to get any psychic abilities. Which is kind of sad, but whatever. Oh, look! A doggy! Well, see, it's it's like earlier days, except instead of Ness, it's Jeff. And Jeff doesn't have any abilities of refilling his health, besides eating things. Shooting this dog. There we go. Jeff's offense is arguably much higher than that of Ness's. Um, or it, it has the potential to be. He has items. He gets an item later. He gets bazookas. Uh, does some serious, serious damage. Basically, what we're going to be doing here um, is just continually working our way down. No grinding or anything. That's not required. Actually, I should probably note that the only real grinding that we had to do was that of uh, the sharks in Episode 2. That was about it. Shouldn't have to grind any more in Earthbound. The tame animals have become wild. Something evil is going on. So why don't you rest here for a short while? Have something to drink? Perhaps some tea? Sure. Are you feeling much better now? Good luck. And that refills my health. Back to 32. Okay, so let's keep working our way down. You have to excuse me for just automatically knowing where the heck I'm supposed to be going. I played this game way too much. We can also cut through the trees here. There we go. Eventually gonna come across a tent, and I don't believe it's this one. I think this one's empty. Yep. <laughs> uh, come across. There we go. These are the Tessie Watchers. They are looking for the uh, lake monster that we were hearing about earlier, who is named Tessie, which is a play on Loch Ness or Nessie. Tessie may unexpectedly be living in the woods. I personally think so. I heard that the wind is always blowing when Tessie appears. Uh, choo! I feel like I'm catching a cold. What a cute little monkey. Would you like a piece of gum? Maybe monkeys don't like gum. You're right. We here at Lake Tess are waiting. 
We're here at Lake Tess waiting to see Tessie. We're known as the Tessie Watching Club. Well, the Tessie is a monster who lives down in the lake. So you've also been bitten by Tessie Mania. You're in luck. We may be able to see Tessie tomorrow. I can't wait. I'm the cook for the Tessie Watching Club. How about some stew? No, no. There's no need to pay me. You are a friend who I have never met before. Jeff, head south. I am Paula. If you hear this message, go to the south. Working through the night, Jeff fixed the broken spray can. After being fixed, the broken spray can became the defense spray. So that is the first example of Jeff fixing an item for us. So now, we no longer have a broken thing, we have a uh, defense spray. Awesome. And it's morning, and the wind is starting to blow. Maybe that whirlpool is. This is what we've been waiting for. Finally, it's coming out. Fart. Excuse me. Tessie is emerging. That is an awesome line of dialogue. Awesome. What a cute little monkey. I said this before. And now, a photo opportunity for someone other than Ness and Paula. Pictures taken instantaneously. I'm a photographic genius. If I do say so myself. Okay, get ready for an instant memory. Look at the camera. Say, Fuzzy Pickles. Wow, what a great photograph. It will always bring back the fondest memories. Get out of here, photo man. we got better stuff to do. Kaki, kaku. Give me some gum now. Kakaku, kiko. I'll take care of everything. You'll have to excuse me for doing the voices of the monkey, because in Fobbies of Orange and in Mother 3, um, uh, in, Mother, in Mother 3 there's also a, uh, a monkey character, and I always did the voices for the monkey. So I just automatically start speaking like the monkey, so you'll have to excuse me if that gets annoying. And now we see that Tessie has appeared. So Tessie is very real. And apparently the monkey can be friends with Tessie? So now we are riding Tessie. We are riding her, or him, or her, or whatever, south. Well, sort of. The biggest problem is that there is a huge gap of water between the land masses in Winters. So the only way to even get down here is to ride on Tessie. Uh, I guess you could take a boat. <laughs> but there's no boats, it's just Tessie. It's the only option. So you can't get from one landmass to the other, so that is why we are riding Tessie down here. So it's a good thing we have that monkey. How beautiful. Man, I love this game. Anyway. And now, Tessie fades slowly away. Goodbye! I'll miss you. Anyway. That's done. We keep moving south because, uh... Ness and Paula are in trouble. We gotta keep fighting... Gruff Goats. Gruff Goat rammed and trampled you. 3 HP of damage instead of 4, so we know that Jeff's defense is increasing. Jeff is getting tougher. So it tears into us, which is a considerable amount of damage. Oh, jeez. We need to kill it. We need to kill it. Oh, whew, that was close. If he would have done another few damage, that would have been bad. Jeff's level is now four. Offense went up by one. Defense went up by one. Guts went up by two. IQ went up by one. Luck went up by one. Maximum HP went up by three. It's not too bad. Well, that's interesting. Does this look familiar? A pencil-shaped iron statue. We already had to deal with one. This dungeon has no entrance fee. Come on in. Well, okay. Welcome to my modest dungeon, Brick Road. So we are now in a dungeon created by Brick Road. Interesting. First thing we're going to do is uh, eat this cookie. When we eat this cookie, it's automatically going to put that salt packet on it. It didn't taste very good. We recovered six health, but that's how much the cookie gives us anyway, so it's not, not too big of a loss. We have no other way to recover health, so we might as well chow down on these cookies. There we go. 27 health isn't bad. What's up, mouse? There's a bunch of uh, presents randomly th uh, thrown throughout this maze. So we're going to go ahead and grab them while we can. And 
then we will continue our journey so Oh, wow. That was some damage. Ugh. I wouldn't mind getting some more health. Health items would be good. Jeff, I'm the present. There's a bread roll. Let's speak to the devil. Let's see, what do we have to eat here? Bread roll. And a boiled egg. Let's go ahead and eat that bread roll. Alright, maxed out. 35 health. It's so weird using a character that doesn't have any health. Because, uh... The other guys have a ton of health. What's up, Mad Duck? Disrupted your senses. Jeff was not able to concentrate. Jeff was not able to use PSI. But Jeff doesn't have any PSI, so it doesn't matter. And then he tried to do it again, even though it was already done. The Mad Duck is, is the best enemy ever. Also, the enemies in Earthbound are so unique. I love that. I mean, I love everything about Earthbound. It's just, it's such an amazing game. Also, I'm not hitting on anything in the game. Please play the game yourself. Jeff's level is now 5, speed up by 1, vitality went up by 1, IQ went up by 1, maximum HP went up by 10. There we go, finally. Now we have something to, uh, to help us live. Jeff opened the present. Insecticide spray. Insecticide spray is um, an item we can use on insect enemies, uh, bugs that we fight, and it'll instantly kill them for us. I usually never remember to use it. Worthless protoplasm. Attacking 8 HP of damage. Surprisingly, those little globs have a pretty good amount of health and also do a pretty good amount of damage. I mean, 8 HP is nothing to laugh at. Alrighty, so we're gonna head up and around to the right and grab that present. We'll be practically through with this cave. Jeff opened the present, there's a broken iron. Which is not a bad thing at all because we, uh... We need, we need more broken stuff. It's not that we, I guess we need broken stuff, but... There's no complaints. We can break stuff. Another photo opportunity? I think yes. Watch for falling materials! Brick Road. When they say falling materials, they mean... The Photo Man. You can actually come back here later, um, once you have your team, and you can get your picture taken, and then it'll... You know... For the record, it actually is keeping these photographs. So... Everything that you see that's going on is actually real. Um, I've been... Crap. I've been told in the past by uh, different members of like Starman and stuff that the pictures are not, they're not actually pictures taken of the screen. They're just, you know, just random things that happen. It doesn't affect, um, you know, if one of your characters are dead, and th this is something you guys don't know yet, but if one of your characters are dead, they appear on screen as um, an angel. They follow around your group, but they're no longer in the party. They just follow around as an angel. Um, also how ironic that there's a, uh, butterfly there. But they were trying to say that there was no, um, uh, it, it didn't matter whether or not, you know, someone was alive. Like, if, if, like, if someone was dead, it would still show them as alive. That's not true. Uh, I've played this game <laughs> enough to know that that's not how it happens. If someone is dead in the picture, uh, that means they'll show up, or if someone's dead in the game, they will be dead in the picture. Um, and you're probably wondering, well, where did the pictures come in? I, I can't spoil all this for you. Keep watching the LP. It gets better. There's so much, there's so many interesting things in this game. Should I, should I really get this thing? Is it gonna make me relax? This is ridiculous. Jeff got a stinking butterfly. It made him relax. Well, that's good. Good for you, Jeff. I'm glad you relaxed. You needed a break. You needed to refill zero PSI. Killing another Rowdy Mouse, smashing my guts in. So we please kill him before he takes me out. There we go. Bye bye, Rowdy Mouse. Jeff gained 34 experience. Open the present. Got a stun gun, but he has too much stuff. Too much stuff, huh? What if we just, uh, straight up threw the pop gun away? There we go. Now we get a stun gun, which is a better item anyway. No complaints. Offense went from 7 to 31. Alright. By the way, I don't normally use the phones. I, I used the phones in, like, the first two episodes, I think? 
Um, I've just been continuing onward since then. Uh, but we will give Maxwell a call. Hello, Jeff. Would you like me to keep a journal, a record of your journey? All right, I have everything written down. Do you want me? To, you want to take a break now? No, we're going to continue. You've become such a hard worker. I've got to get back to working myself. Go for it, bad boy. I just did that so you could know what what that looks like whenever uh, Jeff does it. Maybe it was too easy? My name is Brick Road, the dungeon developer. I've devoted my life to making dungeons. Well, by combining my skills and Dr. Andonut's intelligence, I can become Dungeon Man, the first combination of human and dungeon in history. Let's meet again once I have become Dungeon Man. Would you like to get a good night's rest? Sure. You crazy man with a giant mustache approached me after I walked out of a dungeon. You claimed it was yours and that you're going to combine with my father and make yourself a dungeon. Take care, come back again. You've already heard a few good things about Dr. Andonuts. I am Jeff Andonuts, so Dr. Andonuts is my father. It's been a long time since I've seen him, but we will see him before this episode is over, and that's quite thrilling. Attack slug, we dealt with these guys earlier. They're pretty easy. They were pretty easy when Ness was fighting them, they're still pretty easy, nothing's really changed. Not having PSI sucks, in my opinion. <laughs> Um, a lot of people see Jeff as the most useless character. Also, oh, yeah, if you remember, we had a, uh, a fresh egg. Well, if you hold on to a fresh egg too long, it turns into a chick. And then it turns into a chicken. So, <laughs> that's kind of where we're at right now. Also, we, uh, we don't need the ruler. Just don't need it. And, uh... See, the protractor, what does it say? You can even use this during battle. It can be used many times. Okay, we don't need it, trust me. Don't need a ruler or protractor. That chick is going to bother me to death. Ah. Oh, this is bad. Let's gonna st we're going to start with the, the rowdy mouse because he's the real threat who can do 14 damage. Nice, Jeff. That's a good shot. Attack slug is doing far less. Take him out second. Alrighty. Jeff's level is now 7, IQ went up by 1, HP went up by 3. See, after I get to the HP, I know I can stop, because uh, he never gets any PSI. You know, he's, he's not going to increase PP, and he's never going to get any powers. Oh, wow. Sweet. Go, Jeff. You're the man, Jeff. A lot of people like Jeff. A lot of people consider Jeff the, their favorite character. And then, it's it's usually hit or miss with Jeff. Either Jeff is the is, uh, player's favorite characters, or they don't care for Jeff at all. Um, and I guess it's just because, you know, he is, he's one of those characters that people identify with, I guess, you know, a, a shy, quiet type. Um, and if they're not doing that, then they just don't like him because he doesn't have any, you know, special abilities. I'm going to eat this croissant. 51 health, not bad. Stand on the other side of this present, get that hamburger, and leave so we don't have to deal with that rowdy mouse. Oh, rambling evil mushroom. Let's not fight those if we can help it. Okay, they seem gone. But we got some attack slugs to deal with. See, this is where uh, fire or rockin' would come in really useful. Otherwise, we just have to bash them to death. It's kind of a time waster. I'm really excited to get back to, uh, to three, though. Because once we get back there, we will have a large percentage of the group formed. I'm sure you're probably not completely oblivious that there are four characters in the game. Oh, that's the first O Baby. Double O Baby. Check that out. Got a lot of stat boosts there. And nine HP. Uh, there are four characters in the game. There's Ness, Paula, Jeff, and Pooh. We named them in the beginning. So by adding Jeff to our uh, our group, we're 75% done. We've got all of the characters but one. Don't want to spoil anything, but it will be a while before we get Pooh. Sorry. Don't expect him to join next episode or anything like that. Oh, crap. You know what? Let's just do it. We got a green swirl on it, too. Strut and Evil Mushroom. Uh, did we do it? Did we do it? Wow. Bubble Monkey killed it. Good job, Bubble Monkey. You're not completely, completely useless. A cookie. Okay, sure. Actually going to go ahead and eat that cookie. Why are we heading up here? It's because there is a present. Come on, strutting. Strutting evil mushroom. Let's get it on. 
And there we go. Killing it again. Oh god. It feels so lonely with Jeff. <laughs> it's just like we're walking through these caves and it's like, alright, gotta do this. I mean, the monkey isn't isn't really the same thing. Got a cheap bracelet. It's gonna increase our defense by five. Probably saw over there that there is a shiny spot and you're like, what? Shiny spot? Really? And yeah, it's a shiny spot. We'll, uh, you'll see. Give it a second. Let's run over here before that thing gets... Oh, crap. Looks like we're... Are we fighting two at a time? That sucks. Uh, let's deal with the mouse. I'd rather deal with the mouse. The mouse can do a lot more damage. And Jeff is really powerful now. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain that Jeff is much more powerful at his level now than Ness was whenever they were the same levels. There's level 9, IQ went up by 1, HP went up by 3. I'm gonna grab this. Another bottle rocket, but he's got too much stuff. We'll, 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 we'll deal with it. We'll, oh, we're not gonna eat the chicken, because it's a live chicken. Also, hey, it's a chicken, look at that. Go ahead and grab the bottle rocket. And now, if we use our pack of gum... There we are. Bubble Monkey will fly up there with his helium field gum, which is not... It's not in the game, by the way, I'm just saying that. But it kind of makes sense, because, hey, he's, like, flying using the gum. There we go. Drop that for us. Now we can head on up there. That little noise was because we have a chicken. Oh, goodness, we're going to have to bite some mushrooms. Four damage, plus 46 is 50, but they have 60. Holy crap! Jeez! I've never seen a mushroom do a smash attack like that before. That was ridiculous. Oh, I'm good. They left us a stinking cookie. Do you want to throw something away? Uh, no, I think I don't think so. I think I'm good. I will leave the cookie behind, yes. What do we have in here to eat? Hamburger? I guess we'll eat the hamburger. <laughs> Only Ness can absorb the power of this place. So this is... A sanctuary location. I'm not going to tell you the number because that would uh, spoil some things. There's no no reason to continue to spoil the game for you guys. I, I, sh I shouldn't say continue because I haven't been spoiling the game, but there's no reason to spoil the game for you. So I won't spoil the game. There we go. Strutting Eagle Mushroom stopped. Oh, man. Did they always leave cookies? Stop going. I'm going to run past this one, run past this one, run past this one. There we go. Finally out of that cave. Kiki, Yuki, Cookie. Now she's my type. Kiki, Cookie, Cookie. I think I'll ask her for a date. And so, Jeff is alone again. <laughs> His only friend in the world, a monkey which he purchased at the drugstore for a dollar, is gone. Now this is Stonehenge. These enemies are uh, cave boys. Uh, they're one of the only examples in the game where you're actually faster than the enemies. And you need to be because uh, they're much, much, much stronger than you. You're like, what's up, cave boy? Ah! 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 Okay, really, I gotta get out of here. Jumping into the lab. And that is my father. Mr. Brick Road, the dungeon maker referred you, right? And not only that, what? Who? My son? Oh, I can't... I can't believe it. You're Jeff, my son. It's... It's been maybe ten years since I last saw you. I'm so glad you're such a healthy boy. Uh, those glasses look good on you. How about a donut? Well, I was only offering. I'd, I'd also like a donut right about now. Have you already checked out Stonehenge? Well, at least I asked. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, by the way, why are you here? Oh, I see. That girl named Paula must have sensed I was here. Okay, I'll, I'll try to help you out. I'm trying to make a phase distorter that can connect two points in space and time. It's still incomplete. I'll let you use another invention I call the Skyrunner. It's a little bit old, but it'll certainly help. When you board, always listen for the message that comes from your destination. You'll get there for sure if you listen to the message. The round machine over there is the Skyrunner. What do you think? Isn't it neat? Get in. Let's get together again in ten years or so. I think that's kind of sad. <laughs> anyway. Instant revitaliz revitalizing device in only a few seconds. This machine fully revitalizes you just like a good night's sleep. 
that refills our health. So, this... Doggone chicken. Huh, look, E equals MC squared. This is the Skyrunner, and we are going to be using the Skyrunner next episode. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. This has been Steven George playing Earthbound. Tune in next time for Skyrunner Awesome. And the chicken, I will sell the chicken. I can't stand the chicken. <laughs>